Hello, Steve. I wanted to talk to you about servicing and validation of our steam sterilizers because that's a, an area where often there is a bit of confusion. Mm. And I'd like people, people or dental staff, have a better understanding of when it's to happen and uh, what you do when you come to to ensure that they have a successful visit from their service yeah. technician when they come. Sure. Okay. So starting off. Um, oh. What do you do when you come to a dental practice to do servicing and validation? Okay, so there, there are kind of multiple bits to it and I can see why it's confusing, but we'll try and sort of break it down into the fundamental aspects. One of them is preventative maintenance. So we look after the machine from a technical point of view under the covers. So replacing things like seals and diaphragms and lubricating bits and pieces, cleaning and changing filters, all of that sort of hands-on preventative maintenance activity uh, we do that either six monthly or 12 monthly, um, and that will depend on the usage patterns of the machine. So the bare minimum under the standards would be annually, but quite often in a busy dental practice where they're doing, gee, over uh, 2,000 cycles a year or 1,500 cycles a year, then we would like to try and match the servicing to the usage patterns, and that might look like six monthly. So that's, that's the preventative maintenance aspect. Right, so you'll come along, you'll take the sides off, the tops off, the back off, and you'll be deep and harsh of that's the, right. the steam sterilizer. That's and, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So after the preventative maintenance, you then jump into the validation side. That's of right, yeah. And that validation is kind of an umbrella term which covers sort of three subgroups in itself. Um, we call them IQ, OQ and PQ, or installation qualification, operational qualification and performance qualification. And these sort of buzzwords are what can become confusing. Um, but we, with the installation qualification, even if a machine's been sitting on the bench and being used for the last few years, we still check that. So once a year we'll come along and make sure uh, that the environment is appropriate and safe for the autoclave to be used in and that'll be part of the checklist. Then we work through operational qualification and that is, is the machine of itself empty, so the chamber otherwise empty, no instruments in there, is it calibrated correctly for temperature and pressure without the influence of a load? So that's operational qualification and we must do that annually. Uh, then once we're happy with, so we've done the preventative maintenance and then we've done operational qualification, i.e. empty chamber testing, we're happy with both those things. Then we roll on to performance qualification and that's when we invite the clinic staff to give us their biggest, worst case, most complex to sterilise load that they're likely to put through over the coming 12 months. And that, that biggest load is called a, a reference load. So we reference that. Anything smaller than that load during the year, all good. But that's the biggest load that we've validated the machine to use. Um, and within that reference load, we identify the most difficult pack to sterilize. And that might be a handpiece or um, a cassette or something bagged or pouch, something that's difficult to get steam in and out of. That, that challenge pack within the reference load is where we're going to put our temperature surveillance equipment and the biological spore. Right. Actually, an analogy you used before was cooking a lamb roast. So you said you had uh, you know, potatoes and all the other bits and pieces and or you had the lamb roast. And that's the hardest or the biggest part of the load. And that's what we often stick a thermometer in to check that it's cooked. So similarly here. That's right. So you, as you were saying, you might have all the smaller instruments around, but you'll also have an implant pack or a cassette, depending on the practice. Because mm -hmm. an orthodontic practice won't have implant packs. They'll probably just have hand pieces, which will be the most challenging. And that's the one you put your special temperature probe yep. into to make that's sure right. that when it's going through a cycle, it gets hot enough inside. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so within that reference load, we identify that challenge pack or the, the lamb roast, if you like, and then we place that lamb roast or the challenge pack in the coolest part of the chamber. So every chamber will always have what they call a cold spot. In this particular machine, the cold spot is in the center front middle, right here. So that's where we'll put that challenge pack. 
Yeah, but you, as a practice, don't need to know where the cold spot is. The technician the will know. The technician will know. They'll yeah. know what to do, so you don't have to worry about that. That's right. You just need to perhaps get all the instruments together ready for the technician before they come. Yeah. So that it runs more smoothly and saves time. That's yeah. That would be really helpful if, yeah. if the clinic can have their reference load of instruments and identify a challenge pack before the technician arrives, um, so we're not sort of scrambling looking for instruments to load up. Um, the, other, the other thing that uh, is really important is that we do actually put a challenging load in that chamber because whatever we use to validate the machine today, that's the maximum load that, we can, that, that the clinic is allowed to run for the next 12 months. Mm. So if, they're only, if the technician's only presented with a few bits and bobs to test, then that theoretically is the biggest load that that chamber can see for the coming 12 months. So give the technician plenty of instruments. Instrument selections. That's right. To a point where the technician will say, oh, no, that's too many. <laughs> you know, it's, it exceeds the limitations of the machine. Yes, because right? you can only put so many instruments in. Exactly. Yes, you don't want to overload it. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, so there's a balance. But yeah. uh, more is better than less. So if we've tested the machine for the biggest load of instruments and the biggest challenge pack, and it's passed all of that, then anything less than that for the coming 12 months it will pass as well. Okay, so when the service technician comes, they do a preventative check and replace seals, filters, or whatever it is going. Then they move it into, has the order cloud been installed properly? Because mm -hmm. maybe practices have shifted it right. down the bench or added a second one, so you're making sure that's still in the right place. There's enough airflow and exactly okay and then you go into operational qualification yeah. and that was when you you have to explain it one more time yeah so it's just an empty chamber empty test chamber. where we've got our temperature and pressure loggers in the chamber we run a cycle and we make sure that all the temperatures and pressures are met without the influence of the load That's right. and we do that because the standard says we must do that annually and then once we're happy with that bit then we roll on to the performance pushing, qualification. Pushing instruments exactly. inside, and that's the performance qualification yeah. side of things. And we like to do that in a partnered way with the practice so that yeah. you know we're presented with instruments and the biological spores are going into those, you know, that challenge pack yeah. and the technicians there doing the same as well. Okay. So it actually takes quite a while when the technician comes it out does. to do this servicing and the, all the validation encompasses. It mm. actually takes quite a while. Yeah, in the reporting it's usually broken down and so that you know there's a separate section for preventative maintenance and then installation qualification is a section for that operational qualification section for that so and a graph presented at the end of it uh, and then that fully loaded performance qualification cycle so yeah there are multiple things done on the same visit on site on yeah. that day and all technicians regardless of who they work for will provide the practice with a report a written evidence that this has all been done like when you get your car service you'll get absolutely um, that should, yeah. yeah so practices need to keep that mm. because if after the dental board come knocking they actually want to say this machine have you serviced and maintained it properly it's a really good point because yeah. back in the day we used to use you remember those carbon triplicate pads where you have to press really hard yes, on the top. To <laughs> not too not too long ago we were using that system uh, and you would press really harder and then you would end up with a copy for you a copy for the practice and then maybe one stays in the book or something or goes out with the invoice whereas now most technical companies have moved to uh, an electronic reporting format where it's done on an ipad or a laptop and then that pdf document is then emailed to the practice so mm -hmm. It is important for the practice to sort of receive that report and it might come with an invoice um, and gets filed appropriately somewhere Definitely. so that they can dig it up yeah. when and if asked. Yeah, mm. um, some of the work I've done with AFRA, they have asked to see a dental practices for every steam steriliser on the premise. They say, can we have your servicing and validation records right. from the past year? So they want to see right. that that's one of the things they want to see. Yeah, so, so just being organised and methodical. Being organised and methodical, keep those reports in the one place, back them up. Yeah. Though the company that serviced and validated should also have a copy. Should yeah. you even describe and phone, the phone problem? rings quite often for, yeah. you know, look, uh, look, you know, can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's not a problem. It's, it's yeah, easy, easy, it's easy to do. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. quite important. 
That's great. That has, I hope, helped and simplified this yeah. whole servicing and validation, which can get quite confusing. Okay. But the importance behind it as well. Thank yeah. you. I always learn a lot. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Very welcome.